What's the most insane risk you've ever taken in your career? Moving to Los Angeles was the most insane risk I ever took in my career. I, I left Toronto, I had had a TV series called Boogie's Diner, and um, <laughs> it was garbage. It was a show sort of like Saved by the Bell, but nobody saw it, so that's awesome. It was a Canadian show. Uh, it had Jimmy Marsden on it, now James Marsden. You may know him as Cyclops from the X-Men, but back then he was just Jimmy. And uh, it was crap. Like, you should really look it up, how bad it was. It was, it was horrendous. Um, but what was funny, because it was Canadian, it had to be shown on the Canadian content channels. So you have CFTO or City TV in Toronto. These are Canadian channels. And they, they would have to show a certain amount of Canadian programming in order to qualify for whatever they have to qualify for. So they put, <laughs> they put us, there was Cheers, great show, and Seinfeld. And in between them was our piece of crap, Boogie's Diner. And if you look this thing up, you'd be like, ooh, ooh, that's bad. It was horrible. And I would be out at a bar or something like that and people like turn to me and go, hey, I saw your show. It's like, oh really? They go, yeah. It's great you're working. It's really good you're working. I'm like, no, it's shit. I know exactly what it is. But when that finished, um, I felt like I had hit a level in Toronto that I was going to constantly be that waiter walking into a big movie saying, yo, a salsa? Uh, or these tiny roles, it just didn't matter, and I wanted to take a shot. So I left Toronto, moved to uh, Los Angeles, uh, stayed with my father who lives up in uh, Pasadena. And I, I lived, uh, I went from having a beautiful apartment down on the lake shore in Toronto to sleeping in my little brother's room on a pull-out bed underneath his bed. And I would wake up with gerbils and puppies uh, piddling on me, which is awesome. Um, and the first couple of jobs that I had, I think the first one was for the AF, AFM, no, AFI, American Film Institute. And it was this, I think it's called Corner of Gold. If you, if you look it up, I still have long hair back then and like, yo. Um, and I shot this thing, I had almost no lines. And you gotta remember, I had a fucking series. That was my second series in Toronto. I had done this for years. I made a living doing it. I made a lot of money doing it. Not crazy money, but I made like a hundred grand a year back at like 25. That's a lot of money, dude. Had a nice car, nice place. I come out here, I'm eat, eating ramen. I'm starting over again. And uh, I do this thing, and I'll never forget this. This guy turns to me after we finish shooting this whole thing. He goes, Zach, come here, I want to talk to you. I'm like, yo, yo. I didn't have the glasses back then, so the eyes were much bigger and the hair was long and I'm just a goober. And I'm like, yo, what's going on? He's like, you know, Zach, he was a sound guy. He's like, you know, Zach, um, I just want to say I was watching you. You're really good. Really? Yeah, you're really good. You're really talented. I think you're going to go somewhere. Yeah, I have something for you. He reaches in his card, he, t he reaches in the wallet, takes out a card. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I've made I made it, this is my shot. I knew it would work. I knew it would work out for me. You just gotta believe. And he passes me a card, he's like, you call them. You tell them I gave him, uh, you tell them I gave him the card, give him my name. I'm like, thank you so much. Shake his hand, I don't even look at it yet. I just wanna say thank you. Thank you so much. He turns around and he walks away and I'm like, <laughs> and it's an extras casting company. And I had never done extra work in my life because I grew up doing it. And it kicked me in the balls so hard that I realized that I had to start again where no one gave a shit. And uh, I rode my motorcycle home. It was, that motorcycle was from 1978. I had to wear a garbage bag over my body, taped around my arms because I couldn't afford a, a rain suit. And I rode back to Pasadena and I thumbtacked that on the door. And every morning I got up, I looked at it, I just was like, fuck you, I'm gonna do better <laughs> every single day. So it, that was probably the craziest thing I've ever done. What year was this? 95. And this is when you came to Pasadena? Yeah, I came to, came, came to Hollywood. Came to Hollywood, but stayed in Pasadena. Yeah. And did you ever call the, did you ever do extra? Nope. 
Never did. Nope. So you use that as like this fuel. Basically. Yeah. Yeah. And then once that whole conversation took place, how soon before you booked something, whether it was just a bit part in a commercial? Uh, I booked a movie about three weeks after that for, oh, what's the guy who did all the, he did a Little Shop of Horrors, Roger Corman. I, Roger Corman was doing a thing for Showtime, back when Showtime made crap. And this was the uh, Roger Corman horror hour thingy movie selection. So we did this, I did this movie called Star Hunter, which is Stella Stevens, Rod and McDowell, and myself, and Rebecca Buttig, and Ken Scott, and it is, it is horrible. It's horrible, but it was awesome. I was shooting, I was doing movie stuff, and I was up and running. It was good. And you rode your motorcycle from Pasadena, like 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. to be on set? Yeah. And do you remember how you felt that first day? Uh, ecstatic. Ecstatic. Because that's something that I was comfortable with. Like, I was, I was comfortable, I'm comfortable being on set, doing my job, helping people do their job, being part of the crew, getting it done. I've been a PA, an office PA, a boom man, and a grip uh, back in Toronto. So I knew set decor and backwards and forwards, and I grew up on my mother's knee, be it backstage in theaters or on film sets. So once I hit the set, I'm ready to rock and roll. But trying to overcome the machinery of all these people I don't know in Hollywood, the casting directors and how to get there, was very, very intimidating. When did you throw that business card away? Still have it. Did you take it down at some point from the door? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's in a file. Well, I still got it. What's the file called? Uh, I don't know. It's just in one of my filing cabinets, and uh, it's you know you open it up and ghosts come out. <laughs>